Hi guys, um, George here once again and today what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, Hill 621 Scenario 5 in Classic Squad Leader and it's also known as Scenario E in ASL. Um, the purpose of this video is essentially to do a compare between the two uh, scenarios provide you some pointers as to how to best play it as a German player and how to best play it as the Russian player um, and also provide you some additional links to some reading that I've done uh, that helps me uh, help me play the game well now uh, I this is probably the second time I've made a commentary video regarding this uh, scenario um, the first time I had uh, done um, a commentary I was more well versed with the uh, classic game as opposed to the ASL game um, now I have played the ASL version of the game and um, to be quite honest I'm still rusty with the rules but at least I did the proper rule reading um, I more or less know how to navigate around the rules in, in playing this game in a ASL but again this is not going to be a video about the uh, rules it's more about giving you some hints as to how to play the game well uh, and giving you a comparison between the classical game and the advanced game and, and um, discuss certain nuances between the two systems so let's go on and um, compare the two uh, uh, the two uh, scenario cards um, I would highly recommend that you read the scenario card in detail and um, most important of all uh, be familiar with your OB as the German player or the Russian player and never forget throughout your gameplay one important thing and the one important thing the single most important thing uh, that you need to keep in mind uh, whether you're the German player or the Russian player are the victory conditions now um, so let's begin with comparing the victory conditions between uh, the classic Hill 621 scenario 5 and Hill 621 scenario E victory conditions a Soviet player wins by occupying with unbroken squads or crude AFVs at game end at least five of the seven level three elevation hexes that constitute the high crest line of Hill 621 the German wins by avoiding the Soviet victory conditions very important to note now if we go to the ASL uh, victory conditions the Russians win at game end if they control greater than or equal to five level uh, level three hill hexes on board two um, what they don't discuss here is what is the definition of control can you control a hex um, uh, by uh, AFVs alone or do they need to be occupied by squads uh, I think control should be defined in the ASL rulebook um, I, I, I'm not going to go into that in detail uh, I'm looking at the index now control markers control yep, I was right about that A26.1 so uh, like I said before I'm not gonna go into that minute detail but it is a very important detail I would strongly recommend that the ASL players reread A26.1 before playing this game uh, because you cannot assume that uh, the victory condition in the classic game is the same in its entirety in the ASL version so uh, next I would keep in mind the location and time of of, um, of uh, that this scenario takes place so to make a long story short it's operation migration forgive me if I mispronounce that uh, uh, that um, uh, name however uh, it is about the destruction of army group center and it's 
in late June 1944. Um, why is the date important? Well, the date is important in two respects. One, you know that the Germans are now uh, going down a fast slippery slope in terms of defeat. And secondly, um, in the ASL game, uh, with respect to riders, there is a date where people or you can have riders on armored fighting vehicles. I'm going to talk m more about that later as to what why is and why it is important. So there's a little nuance in um, between ASL and the classic game right there. Um, the second nuance is the SSR or the special rule. Um, all right, uh, with uh, ASL we have uh, environmental conditions, no win. After at start placement, each German infantry unit must take a task check. The only possible consequence of failure is that the unit must begin a scenario broken. Those units which break during this pre-game task check are not subject to desperation morale in the initial German uh, rally phase. The one thing it does not uh, talk about uh, in both the classic game and the ASL game is okay what happens to to units stacked with leaders? Do they uh, take a, a, a in addition if in the ASL game if the leader breaks um, and both leaders at start have a higher morale, do the units also have to take a task check? In the uh, classic game, let's go to the classic card special rules. After at start, set up Germans must check. Uh, must check morale for each unit failing a normal morale check must start as broken but need not rule desperation morale the next time they attempt to rally unless they are fired on since the preceding rally phase um, so again uh, with respect to breaking if you're stacked with the leader in the classic game do you have to take a leader loss morale check and uh, both in each occasion that I've played it, uh, my opponent and I agree that since we exclude desperation morale, we should also exclude uh, the leader loss or uh, leader loss morale check or the leader uh, loss task check in that respect. Um, so let's look at the OB. The OB is rather interesting. What I have here is scenario five. You have your basic counters at T34, uh, no armor modifiers except on the quick reference chart. You have your 122, which fires HE ammunition only, uh, two 152 assault guns, HE only, uh, two half tracks, and 48 447 squads along with a couple of MGs. Uh, your reinforcements, eight six to eight, an HMG, and an LMG with a 9 minus 2 leader. Yeah, he's a, a powerhouse. Um, the Germans start, uh, again, this is a classic game with Staller, which has a, a, a great reputation. Uh, Heiken, 467s, 8467s, 4 MGs, uh, light machine guns, 1 MG, 1 HMG. Uh, Panzerfausts are not an inherent weapon in the classic game and 80 millimeter OBA. And along with that comes a 247, a crew counter, a, um, a uh, half track, and a AT gun, 75, rate of fire 2. Uh, with rate of fire 2, it literally means on every shot, on every occasion you have two shots to, or two opportunities to, to, um, to hit the target. Not like ASL where you're your dice has to be a, 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 a 1 or a 2 to get raked. Uh, with an LMG, and the LMG is pretty much useless unless someone takes out the gun and then uh, there is no position in, in squad leader, classic squad leader, uh, and then the crew can have uh, an LMG with uh, a range of 8 as opposed to having a range of 4. Um, in this respect, the uh, ASL game is pretty much similar except I believe you have one less LMG 
uh, my car uh, yeah one less LMG in the uh, German OB you have the same rank leaders and you have a radio now the radio in ASL precludes the leader from making more than one um, action so you either are rallying units or you're on the radio calling OB, OBA in so in this uh, respect in the ASL game you're better off giving the radio to the lower uh, ranked leader as opposed to a 9 minus 2 um, and here you have uh, the crew the AT gun 75 L type weapon and um, no LMG for the, the crew now given this OB what I recommend in terms of a setup let's go to our board here right okay um, in the classic game I would like to keep all my units uh, in somewhat uh, close to their leaders um, in the ASL game you can afford to to have them a bit more spread out uh, I'm just gonna try and get these guys in their location so you have to set up in any whole hex on board four um, setting up close to where the Germans would other uh, where the Russians would otherwise set up is not recommended because if you are uh, within uh, I believe eight hexes range the Soviet player can opt for a human wave and, and you don't want to give the Soviet player uh, uh, that opportunity to uh, charge at you essentially now what I like to do in this case is okay in the in the classic game there's no possession but in this game there is you wanna have a your oh, that's an MMG nope you wanna have your HMG there with your 9 minus 2 leader um, if you wanna stack more than one squad that's alright but um, um, the MMG here which uh, can okay, let's put a squad first right there okay and uh, the other interesting place where you can put uh, 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 put a uh, 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 put units are here uh, in this hex here right you can stack a leader with uh, his radio here that proved to be effective for me and then you have a couple of LM LMGs um, uh, hard to say where to put the LMGs now in the classic game I would probably stack them in these hexes here right and uh, somewhere where they can route here or, or even there but actually more around here and the other place that I like to set up people are here because they kind of cover everything see they produce great fire lanes now and and then 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 uh, let's give him another squad there you go and let's take off the moves now um, on turn one you will also be having um, a half track coming in uh, so you'll probably have you should set it up here I'll tell you why to set up to later there now you pretty much have everything covered here providing that they um, you pass the task check now why set up a shot over there uh, I'll tell you my, my secret um, so the Russians usually set up around here right down here right okay great now what the biggest mistake an inexperienced player will do is probably take a uh, let's see where do we oh here we are take a, a level 2 counter higher put him on level 2 and take the 9 minus 1 leader uh, let's take two squads uh, 
Okay. Uh, let's put the squad first. Give him possession of an MMG. Another squad. MMG. And Dotsky. Now, why would this setup be a mistake for the Russian player? Um, let's take a look at and see. Um, loss from here to there. It does not appear he has line of sight. Let's do that again. Maybe I'm doing it incorrectly. Hmm. Blocked. Hmm. Oh. Let's assume then that Shaw was in fact here, or Stahler rather, was here. Okay, It still should be somewhat of a mistake because, now let's check LOS again. It's a clear LOS, 12, range, uh, 12 hex range. So what does that mean? 12 hex range, clear LOS. So um, the best that Dotsky could muster is a four up one against Stahler. Uh, the, the, the range of the squads is a maximum of eight and uh, the MMGs are halved and don't forget that the Soviet MMGs are five portage points and only have a range of 10 and break down 11. So essentially you're firing them at long range, half firepower and you only have a you, you have a up one um, DRM. All right, great. Now what does Shaw have? Or Stahler, actually. He can fire at eight up one, double the firepower, because it's a range of 12, so these two squads are halved. And the HMG has a range of 16, so it's at full firepower. So it's up to 11, but there is no 11. He's one firepower away from from uh, having a 12 firepower attack, so stack an LMG with them. You'll have a 12 up one. How will he, how long will he, um, on average rolls, uh, last up there? And in the meantime, having Dotsky up there in the second level of building N2, two, uh, 3 and 2 is an opportunity cost because as a leader, he can initiate a human wave. He can give at least uh, one squad and an MMG uh, additional movement. Now, speaking of the Russians, okay, um, let's take a look at the Russian OB um, because it's different from the classic game as opposed to the ASL game. So let's go back to the scenario cards. Russian OB. 48 Russian units, but take a look at this, folks. These units have assault fire, and they're lined by the five, but they only have a range of two. So the best use of, and no smoke exponents for either one, um, so the best use of these units here is to charge. Get up close and personal. Take advantage of the assault fire capability, and if you don't, you lost the game. Surefire bet you've lost the game. Four four sevens, usual Joe Schmo. Sorry for the expression. It's just a typical Russian unit. Okay, you have two MMGs. There are no use of for you at long range, and as for the LMGs, they're only useful up close and personal. Okay, and I would suggest that you give the LMGs to the five to sevens not to the 447s for two reasons. One, it it, it, it allows you to fire at a longer range and at um, point blank range with assault fire, 
you have a uh, point blank range or within a four hex range you have assault fire well, actually you have to be in normal range to get assault fire so in normal range with the LMGs these units become uh, units that can um, clear the way for everybody else to take the objective so um, before I, I provide you with a, 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 a recommended setup for the uh, Russian player um, I want to go back to the objective and this is typically what the Russian player forgets the objective ladies and gentlemen is capture five or greater than these uh, hexes so your thought in the game should be move 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 um, the thought that the German player needs to keep in mind is defend 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 um, skulk I draw own risk um, if you find yourself in, in in front of a Russian fire group where the odds are are against you and you feel it is prudent to skulk go ahead but if you're counting on skulking as the key to winning the game it ain't gonna happen now uh, before we go on to the Russian OB I think here um, in the classic game um, the uh, penalty for having a, a told weapon is double the cost of the terrain right um, I'd have to revisit the rule book just to confirm how uh, the towing is 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 like in in ASL it, it's somewhat similar but again uh, it escapes my memory at the moment so um, the important thing about this gun is is even if it takes three turns your ultimate objective is this X right here okay you occupy this hex here okay um, and uh, let's do just a quick LOS check you practically have a clean line of sight to um, mostly anything on the board okay uh, and it just cuts down the Russian advance um, having uh, an MG here uh, is great also you can create a fire lane but it's not recommended because a the Russian player can use bypass movement along the inside of this grain hex and just advance on to you but it still splits up his assault how that happened I'm not sure let's go back right all right so what is the ideal Russian setup okay so you have 24 four four sevens all right and uh, let's see is there really three leaders here or did I give my opponent the um, Russian uh, uh, OB uh, here Russians yep 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 three leaders great so you got three lines of attack let's go back here all right five to sevens what's his name Koenov and Bernsky all right sorry about that taking a bit some of time here okay let's see how we're gonna set these guys up here three lines of attack can you can forget this uh, delete um, oh here's a good place to put um, 
an MG and a leader. Here's another good place to put an MG and a leader. And those are to my two MGs. And let's see. And we did say we're going to put a leader there. There we go. Let's put one of these babies here. Give him an LMG. Whole hexes. So basically here what I'm doing is, is I'm forming a nice line. Uh, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is for two reasons. I'm doing a scattered assault, right? And uh, if I put units here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they're out of uh, not in range, unfortunately. Um, but we will in any case. There you go. And um, see here, I could have used another leader um, for this side of the board. Now, why am I putting units here as well? I'll explain that in a second. Let's just continue. I think you're getting the, the gist of it. I don't feel too comfortable putting too many units there. Um, there. And perhaps these units are better off here. Right? Yeah, I am stacking two units per um, per hex. But when it comes to movement, I will not move each unit, uh, the stacks. I'm going to move one unit at a time, and perhaps even assault move a couple. Um, Oops, put them there. There's a couple of units we can put here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and CXing is probably recommended. Uh, get up there as soon as. And you notice I have now my leaders on three different spears of attack. Um, why did I place units here on the far edges of the board? Here, here. Uh, is because on the second player turn, um, these panzers are slated to come in. Okay. So where would I place the uh, uh, place the um, the panzers ideally 
what I'd like to do uh, is because I'm outnumbered in tanks I, uh, 6 to 60 34 to my tanks ideally I would like to move them on these locations here so I'm combining my tanks with the infantry fire okay the T-34s come too close they'll have the infantry to contend with All right now the main difference between um, uh, the classic game and ASL is in the classic game um, you can achieve this pretty easily in um, in ASL it would not be possible it would not be possible unless you go CE so you can benefit uh, for from the um, half movement factor the road bonus so if these units are CE and if and you have a a a, a Russian advance here right all along this road or maybe even they could have made it up here right what happens then if they're contemplating on getting the road bonus and going CE along this road hex right you can fire in the uh, exposed crew stun them they fail a morale check etc etc it impedes uh, the ability of the your advance your 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 wave of advance kind of impedes um, the German armor from advancing to the desired uh, locations now what can you do as the German player to 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 counteract this is go here uh, the Russian player has to bring in his tanks from one road hex or the other not both these T3 reports down here right so uh, all is great and dandy uh, the the Russians are advancing at their towards their location um, they are impeding your the ability for you to uh, get your tanks in a hull down position or close to in, infantry so they can be supported by infantry take the opposite take the opposite route and uh, go for the armor start thinking about the armor right um, again um, is it always straightforward? Um, I'm not sure. Now, there is an article, and I'll give you the link to this article. And this article was written for the uh, by Bill Thompson uh, for uh, tips on using the armor here. So instead of going into a dice game, um, you will have the advantage. So I highly recommend this. Um, uh, this uh, article to be read um, and in principle uh, th these tactics also apply to the ASL game as well as as the um, the uh, classic game um, so so far what do we got let's take a go look back at the map board um, so we have the cl classic setup uh, we have where the Russian uh, units should be set up and how they should execute their their attack always focus on your ultimate victory objective let's talk about the T-34s T-34s what I recommend is take out the um, if you if it's possible take out the German Panzers if it's not possible use your armor as a critical assistance tool to break the German line and ensure a path to the hill or beat a path to the hill as, as soon as possible uh, and co cover your your butt so you can you can send three tanks up towards the hill and have three tanks protect the uh, the flanks and the rear of the uh, advancing tanks 
Simple as that. Is it simple? Perhaps not. It sounds a lot more simpler than than it is, but uh, you also need an element of luck. Um, now, as for the advancing troops, uh, the reinforcements that come in turn five, um, let's 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 turn to these fellows here first before we turn to the Russian player. I have a couple of points to mention about these fellows as well. Now, they're coming in using half tracks as passengers, right? There you have them, right? Um, keep in mind the uh, portage points and also give the radio to your worst leader possible, right? Uh, you have an MG and you have a M HMG of course you're going to stack through leader here now what you need to do ultimately is debark on the uh, reverse slope in these hexes here right Now, there could be, um, and actually you should be, have group here, have the MMG here or there, there you go, where's that leader, yep, great, and this fellow here, right, um, point of reference, this is an LOS uh, blockage. Uh, group with his HMG can pretty much cover this side of the hill. Uh, the MMG can cover here depending on whether your AT uh, gun survives or not they pretty much have everything here covered. Now the trick is debark there and then bring that half truck up there. Okay, Bring him up there he has a a AA gun with three firepower factors. He gets destroyed. Wreck him. Oops, sorry. Wreck him. Okay. He's underneath the wreck. He gets a plus one modification. He already gets a plus one modification, but he continues having a, a plus one mo modification DRM, uh, even if the uh, the Russian units make it to the second level hill hexes. Alright. Your reinforcements, you'll have to wait and see how the battlefield evolves to see where it, it is best to bring them in. Uh, just make sure that you use this uh, tank against uh, infantry and the Stugs as assault guns against the any remaining uh, Russian uh, armor. Uh, this is also a very powerful weapon, uh, half track with a seven uh, MMG covered arc machine gun, and I, th I believe the th three is a rear gun uh, MG. Here you have another typical half track with nine portage points. Uh, this is a beautiful weapon, and you can use it as a reverse. Depending on how the battlefield here evolves, you can use it as a reverse slope. Um, defense. It has a rate of fire of 3, so it's great not against the um, the imminent coming of of the uh, Russian tanks, uh, but moreover against infantry units. Um, using area, far, area target type, why not? And uh, this is a 105 HE ammunition only. Uh, excellent against infantry as well. Um, which leads me to, uh, we already discussed the T-34s, oops, I forgot a couple of units here, but again, you get the gist of where they're supposed to be. Um, I would have probably set them up here in any case, something like that. Okay, now, let's get back to the last reinforcements that the Russians have. 
So you're given these nice tanks with 29 portage points. And they're lightly covered vehicles. Again, you're going to have to evaluate how the battle on board 3 evolved. Do you have a clear path? Are there AT guns and viable German armor around? Um, rule number one. Um, I would rather uh, put the uh, HMG, if possible, a a squad here and the leader as a passenger to an armored fighting uh, vehicle, not in a light truck. Um, So you can very easily um, put them here, but these guys that are then vulnerable, especially to HMG fire. So if you have an, a German any, uh, uh, HMG there, um, these targets, their uh, the the trucks uh, are resolved on the star column of the IFT table. Uh, they can blow up pretty quickly. Now in the classic game, uh, you don't have these trucks, I don't believe. Let's let's double check that. Let's see if my memory serves me correctly right there. What do you have in terms of reinforcements with the 628s? Uh, you have half tracks, the M3. Now I could really um, go in into more depth but I believe that um, these three recommended readings, and I'll post the links below, uh, are of essence. Okay, first reading, Holding the Ridge, an analysis of Scenario 5 by Martin Shaw. Again, this is uh, a discussion based on the classic game. You can basically apply these principles as well to ISL. I have it worked. Of course, rolling below average rolls also works, but that's beside the story. Um, Little 621, BBG. There's a nice uh, tribute to John Hill, uh, made by Merrick Blackman. So this is a great uh, AAR as well. That is worth reading. Okay. Uh, I believe he's playing the classic game here. Oh well, I thought it was ASL. Uh, hard to find uh, literature here. Squad Leader Academy. Uh, just to uh, reiterate, uh, uh, a nice article written by Bill Thompson uh, about tank duels. Um, so I cannot emphasize this enough that, uh, look, if you want to up your game, uh, do your research uh, by uh, but the most important factor I, I believe is experience. Uh, playing the scenario several times against several different opponents. Enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, losing is not the end of the world. Uh, and in fact, uh, I probably lost this game more than I've won. Um, but the few victories that you get, uh, you can eventually pat yourself on the back and say, say okay I've learned something and I'm, I've also taught my opponent something and so that that was my the principal purpose of my video too is to give you guys some something or, or a, uh, a head start on how to to win this scenario I certainly um, had a most the most uh, amazing experience uh, playing this game uh, against uh, Mark Dennehy and he was a great player yeah and we did a lot of rule diving I think we were playing over the course of about a month and a half if not two months um, two nights a week uh, three hours or six hours a week it was a great game we've seen things events that uh, went down that were I've never seen in other uh, plays and it certainly is um, 
a, a great experience and a wonderful way to reinforce your rule reading and reinforce the memory of the of your rules. Um, so that's pretty much it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and tell your friends about it. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, thanks and take care.